De retour à Côte d'Or depuis quelques mois, les joueurs de la Liverpool Football Academy ne chôment pas. Ils profitent pleinement des facilités pour les préparations physiques. Cela sous la supervision du head coach Neil Murphy. Fantastic movement back into Côte d'Or, as you can see around us. Uh, we're using all these amazing international standard facilities to, the, to its full potential. And these boys are very lucky to be able to come in here and do the training three times a week in these amazing uh, environments. And this is something new, uh, the equipment you having here. Yeah, this is something we've always wanted to do. We've always wanted to kind of to, to, to help the boys and girls with the strength and conditioning program. So we started this two months ago with the expertise of our now high performance centre staff. They collaborated with us and we've come up with five compound exercises to help the boys develop the strength and prevent injuries as well, which is also very important as they're growing up. Um, how important uh, it is, I was going to ask you this question anyway, uh, for these uh, strength training. It's, it's, it's very important. I'm sure these boys, haven't, boys and girls haven't done these exercises before. So previously they were coming in with hamstring injuries, thigh injuries, sore backs. So we thought, well, let's try and, let's try and, let's try and help them. And while we have these amazing, uh, amazing, this amazing venue uh, and the expertise we have now, then we can put on something like this and, and help them kind of fulfill the potential but they'll have a long breaks of injuries. We can see in some of them that uh, they are starting to, to build that uh, physical aspect uh, uh, to go maybe further in the game. Yeah, 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 I t totally agree. We've been doing this for two months and already you can see progress in their, in their physicalities. This group behind us is just the babies. Well, we say babies, they're born in 2009. So we do this for every age group from 2009 right up to 2004. So the 2004s are now 18, 10 and 18 this year. So they're, they're really enjoying these exercises. So uh, what's the, the batch, the age group you're having here at the moment uh, in Côte d'Or? Right now or in general? In general. In general, yeah, it's 2009 till 2004. So that's at the moment, it's U13 to U19s. They don't come every day or uh, they have uh, the days where they have to come and train? Yeah, yeah, it's specific days. That each, each team gets three times training a week. That's two trains at Cote d'Or and then they have a match day as well. So you are having exhibition matches um, at, at the moment? How is it going? Just, yeah, obviously we're still following all the protocols and the sanitization measures. Uh, but yeah, we're just doing some behind closed doors training exercises. We just started that now, so it's been we had we had a, we had a nice Easter weekend of of training exercises. Full capacity, or there's going to be another intake soon? Yes, definitely, we're going to do an in, another intake soon. Again, we've been restricted with how and when we've been able to do our selection processes, but with things getting back to normal sooner rather than later, we'll be looking to start intakes probably in the winter around July August time. Liverpool Academy has been here since a few years now, uh, I guess. Uh, and you've been associated directly with this project, with the training of not only the players, but the coaches uh, as well. And uh, the team, just talk a bit about that. The first team? Uh, the coaches and, and the players, the everyone. Yeah, we've, like you said, we've been together for nearly three years now. So we've formed a pretty, a pretty tight squad. Uh, coaches bonding very well with their own team players. Sometimes the, after every season, the, the teams will change coaches, so everybody gets to see all the players and have their own influences and impacts on them. So we, we're, we're forming a really, a really tight, really tight team. Nobody's, nobody's left in those three years. Everyone's happy working here. It's a, it's a great environment to be involved in. What's happening? To these youngsters afterwards, I think you, you've had some questions about that. Maybe the, the batch you had three years back, where are they now? Well, obviously, throughout the year, they'll move up in their age groups. So, under-12s will move to under-13s, and 
so on and so on. So we now have this pathway for that will start at under 12s and go right the way up to under 19. So there's seven years that they could be involved with Liverpool Football Club. Uh, we do have. We do have plans for bigger and better things, but I'll have to keep that a secret for the time being. But there's going to be some really exciting developments happening over the next couple of months. And we have you here. Obviously, we'll talk about Liverpool in the Premier League. Carabao Cup, it's done. FA Cup, they've got a strong chance. They've got a chance in the Champions League as well. So it might be history for Liverpool this season. Well, that's why it's never been done before because you know, it's, it's so hard, this quadruple. Uh, they've got the winning mentality, they have the momentum at the moment, and, that, and that's, that speaks a lot in this game of football. If you, you go out on the football pitch and you feel like you're never going to be beaten, then it, it, you know, it helps, it gives you a head start before, before the ref even blows the first whistle. So, who knows? Who knows what could happen? You excited about that? <laughs> I'm very excited. There's some huge games coming up. There's been some huge games that they've already played. Every game seems like it's a huge game. And that will be the same for the next, for the next six weeks. And do you have video sessions for, things, for these youngsters? Do you show them, I don't know, uh, matches of, of Liverpool or, or uh, kind of players there? Yeah, yeah. We always, we always get given uh, highlight reels from Liverpool FC uh, back home in, in the UK. So they're constantly communicating with us, sending us video reels from uh, LFC TV, and then we'll pass them on to all the players to, to, uh, to have a look at. Also, we do our own match analysis, so we'll video all the games, and then we'll uh, try and pick out some mistakes or some highlights and show the players that's a really good tool, so then the players can actually see where they're doing well or where they need uh, some improvements. You have a, a girls team as well here? Yeah, yeah, we have two girls teams. Fantastic. It's going strong. Yeah, it's going great. I, uh, it's a, I'm, I'm a very lucky guy to be working here. I love the island and love the place. It's, you know, it's, it's one of the best jobs in the world for me. So really, really happy. L'aspect physique est important dans la vie d'un sportif afin d'améliorer la performance. Nous vous présentons ici quelques jeunes de l'académie. Camon Bouquet. Donc, depuis combien de temps tu es dans Liverpool Academy Quand j'ai un an. Et depuis un an, là, comment tu as progression dans le football hein? Raconte-nous un peu. Pour faire moi, je suis plus bien, pour faire moi, je suis C'est moi, je continue. Comment tu as découvert l'académie Comment tu as intégré ça Non, je me coachais dans le même papier. Et là, je me suis fait mon parent signer pour, pour me faire un peu de détection. Quel endroit tu étais Ma blessure. Et là, il ne m'a pas pris là, mais j'ai vu un, un jalé pour me faire pour mes élections. Mais trouve-toi, par exemple, tu as un exercice euh, physique, gym, et tu es assez à l'aise avec ça. Et comment une séance d'entraînement déroulée pour toi hein? Explique-nous un peu. Comment euh, arrive toi J'aime quand j'ai coulé un peu plus de c'est moi, je continue quand même. Et là, euh, de plus en plus, ou habitué. Hein? Ça veut dire que quand tu finis l'école, il y a une vanne qui vient prendre toi Oui, il y a un point de vue, un point de vue, avec une situation, il y a un point de vue, il y a un point de Quel objectif tu as dans le football Il y a un grand football, il y a un zéro professionnel, il y a un chèque moyen. Il y a un chèque Il y a un chèque moyen. Il y a un chèque moyen. Il y a un chèque moyen. Alors, Lach, depuis combien de temps tu es dans le football académie Oui, pour un an. Quel endroit tu habites Bon, vous. Comment tu as découvert Liverpool Academy De l'école, pour que je ne me pas pied. Je suis fait la détection. Je suis fait la détection. Je suis sélecté pour rendre Liverpool Academy. Combien de fois par semaine tu viens entraîner ici Trois. Trois fois. Raconte-nous une séance d'entraînement. Comment il est déroulé Par exemple, je suis au gym. Il est assez dur. Mais c'est le moment où nous faisons la guerre pour nous faire. Pour nous faire jouer de match. Tu es ici, mon Oui. Quel objectif plus tard hein? Tu as envie de continuer à jouer au football, devenir une professionnelle Et une envie de devenir un grand footballeur pour aller jouer dans pays. Chad Howard. So Chad, uh, in the Liverpool Academy, since how many months um, About one year, 12 months. How did you discover the Liverpool Academy How did you get to know about it I loved it. I like the people that are here, they're very nice. I like the coaches and all that stuff, yeah. 
I like the facilities too. So you join here and um, training here with the guys. How is it going on for you? It's going very good. I'm improving quite a lot. What are your aims? Do you want to become a professional footballer one day? Yes, I want to play for the big Liverpool team with Salah and Mane. So that's your favorite team? Yes. Do you think they'll win the four trophies this season? Yeah, for sure. Best favorite, team in the world. Your favorite player? Salah. Je m'appelle Alexandre Lafontaine. Alexandre, quel endroit tu habites Pont Blanc. Et comment tu fais pour venir ici Raconte-nous tous les jours. Au fait, moi, depuis le depuis mois de mon troisième mois de janvier, je me dis, ça a été toujours, je viens footballer, et il est là. Je me persévère, je passe dans trois clubs de football avant de venir ici. Je euh, passe dans l'école de foot, dans le centre technique. Après, dans mon endroit, je me suis pesé, il est là, je me dis, quand je suis bien fait, je suis venu ici. Ça veut dire, depuis l'école, quand la journée est finie, euh, comment tu fais pour venir entraîner Côte d'Ivoire euh, Au fait, mon école prêt à place que je pour moi. Je suis venu dire que je ne pas besoin de faire des baisers. Qui peut te jouer toi Je droit. L'entraînement, tu veux dire ici hein, et finir le gym, à jouer au football, comment tu manages Au fait, pas ça, je dis là, je dis que je suis en persévérance et en détermination. Si vous avez des de qualités là, ben, ça va nous faire la vie facile. Après, tout dans la tête. Quel est l'objectif, Peter Moi, mon objectif, je suis dans le club M, le club Maurice, le club Maurice. Manchester United aussi, après Non, <rire> Liverpool, non. L'Académie de Liverpool se conjugue également au féminin. Martine Kelly a récemment été à Anfield pour se perfectionner. Elle officie comme coach. Déjà, qui est joueuse dans l'équipe de la S4 Brown. Pour la suite, il y a beaucoup de coachs qui nous et moi, qui poussent moi vers le coaching. Et aussi, la fédération nous donne la possibilité de prendre un coup à Maurice et surtout à l'extérieur, au niveau de la CAF, côté féminin. C'est pour la suite, on a à fond dans le coaching. Ici. Pointifi, euh, bien sûr, maintenant il y en a de plus en plus, je pense, ou une bonne euh, première qui, qui fait évoluer dans ce sport-là. Vous pouvez suivre le football Comment vous intéressez-vous au football ben, Moi, depuis assez jeune, je me suis au football avec mon parent, sûr. Je suis content de football, je suis passe-temps. Et je me commencé par ça, je me suis au football, je me suis lancé à fond là-dedans. Depuis assez jeune, comme on dit, ben, c'est pour la suite, hein, tout enchaîné. Quand, quand on revient à un certain âge, c'est préférable ben, nous lance nous vers le coaching, qui nous, nous reste dans l'environnement là. Okay, nous passons sinon aussi perdu aussi. Et aussi, euh, vu que mon compte travaille aussi avec ben, jeune, euh, ben, c'est ça. C est, c est, ça fait moi plaisir de travailler avec ben, jeune, surtout maintenant pour penser à autres le foot. Ou Liverpool Academy, Liverpool Academy depuis trois ans. Ouais. Moi pensais où ici. Raconte-nous ça l'aventure là. Comment ça a commencé, escalier, comment ça a aller? Ben déjà, comment on connaît, nous connaissons l'académie de Liverpool ici à Maurice, nous met en place, euh, on est intéressé et on fait un bande démarche et comment on arrive ici, quand on trouve le programme qui ben, nous propose nous et l'encadrement et euh, surtout nous le coach Nil euh, sur l'expérience qui est là, qui les partage avec nous. Ben, pendant ces trois ans-là, on trouvait qu'on apprend beaucoup. Euh, et aussi nous avons la possibilité pour entraîner avec Ben Jeune, comme on me dit à vous. Ben Jeune, c'est la formation qui nous besoin surtout ici à Maurice. Nous travaillons avec ça, Ben Jeune là, pour nous espérer demain. Euh, comme on nous connaît, le football comme on a été ici à Maurice, euh, nous gagnons bon l'équipe hein, U15 pour commencer, U13, U17, qui nous trouve un joueur capable de jouer au niveau pour l'équipe de Maurice.
Donc, une, une jolie aventure pour vous à la Liverpool Football Academy. Qui est au rôle exactement ici, dans l'encadrement ben ici, euh, cette année-ci, euh, on a une équipe féminine qui, qui est aux choses. Ben, bientôt, nous connaissons tout le monde qui peut commencer. Ben, déjà, tout ça, l'équipe équipe est passée là. Moi, je travaille pour le football féminin, précisément. Euh, au but, c'est qu'ils m'ont envie de euh, faire le football féminin progresser. Et c'est pour ça qu'ils m'ont préféré travailler avec des jeunes. D'accord Et mon bon, envie qui nous gagne beaucoup de qualité, qualité vengeuse qui, pour la suite, nous sommes capables de gagner une bonne équipe ici à l'Académie et aussi une équipe nationale, bien sûr. Au fin récemment, il y a eu l'occasion à Liverpool, à Anfield, pour suivre une stase. Raconte-nous comment ça l'opportunité là de nous présenter. Ben, déjà, c'était extraordinaire pour moi. Euh, on a une possibilité pour aller, le coach Néline choisit moi. Euh, ben, pour la suite, nous sommes à l'Anfield, euh, à Liverpool. Euh, nous avons visité euh, le stade, nous avons le, un peu le AXA Center, nous avons fait un bon entraînement. Et aussi, nous avons quelques bonnes euh, guests qui sont présents qui nous cause beaucoup, comme en Pep, Linders, il nous cause assez longtemps avec nous. Et aussi, euh, Banen met beaucoup l'emphase sur le safeguarding, qui est très important de nos jours, surtout qu'il nous fait travailler avec Banen Jeune. En gros, nous nous cause aussi, euh, c'est l'année dernière qui nous passait euh, dans l'académie, c'est-à-dire dans toutes les académies au monde. Et aussi, euh, c'est pour, pour la suite, là, là nous avons ben, essayé de euh, trouver qu'il nous a fait de, de plus, nous capable d'améliorer pour les années à venir. Combien de temps de passer là-bas ben, Environ 7 jours. Ouais. Et aussi, comme on dit, nous avons la possibilité euh, une équipe euh, féminine de Liverpool. Ben, mais c'était vraiment extraordinaire et aussi euh, important. Quand on trouve le niveau et tout ça, ben, moi, le but maintenant c'est de me venir ici. Euh, on travaille un peu plus avec nos bonnes filles, avec nos bonnes jeunes. Et je suis à ça, l'expérience. Ici. Justement, et au passage là-bas, pour venir appeler Cli ici, euh, qui sont insensés à nous dire dans, dans l'approche et dans la façon qui est au capable de porter ça, l'expérience là ici ben, déjà, enfin, on a beaucoup de pays, euh, on a une vision, on connaît comment ça passait en dehors, surtout en Afrique. Ben, déjà là en Europe, quand on dit ça, man, man, madame là, vous êtes vraiment professionnel. Ok? On a beaucoup de travail qui nous vient faire. Et surtout, ce qui est important, c'est l'encadrement de haut. Ce n'est pas juste le travail qu'on a pour faire le terrain, c'est un travail qu'on a pour faire en dehors aussi. Qui nous pas trouvé, mais c'est pas ça qui nous est capable de progresser dans le football ici à Maurice. Qui est un objectif plus tard hein? comment, comment on peut trouver où l'avenir dans le domaine football ben Déjà, pour le moment, on sent moins bien ici, comme on me dit à où, l'encadrement et tout, le travail qu'il nous peut faire et on apprend beaucoup. Et on peut travailler beaucoup avec Banfish et tout. Mon but, moi, c'est. Dans cinq ans, au moins, nous avons une bonne équipe nationale. D'accord Et avec ça, une jeune qui nous est là, nous avons une bonne équipe nationale qui nous est capable de participer au moins au niveau de la CAF, qui nous a beaucoup de compétitions maintenant. Nous ben, avons proposé beaucoup. Ben, C'est ça. Nous pas seulement juste s'entraîner pour nous jouer ici, à Maurice. Nous sommes capables de compétir au niveau de l'Afrique. Parce que nous arrivons en 2022. Il est temps qui comme ici nous capable de rivaliser au moins au niveau de l'Afrique. Qui me dit un souvenir où il y a de passage à Liverpool là-bas Bah assez tout. Tu as le match entre Barcelone, les gens de Barcelone et Liverpool, qui est à Anfield. 
et aussi ce qui est plus. Oui, nous avons l'occasion d'assister ça. Et aussi, nous sommes capables de visiter les entraîner. Et surtout, les filles, nous avons la possibilité de faire l'entraîneur et euh, une joueuse. Pour toi, je te cause un peu avec ça. Ça fait mon plaisir. Well, my name is Peter Kraus. I'm from Czech Republic and I've been riding bike trials since I was a little kid. It's basically uh, riding over obstacles on the bicycle. You can find any kind of obstacles in the nature or uh, man-made obstacles. And actually the, the competition is about to jump over things, ride over things and not to put your feet on the ground. That's, uh, that's a mistake, actually. So you need to be clear and perfect, you know, riding. You got a couple of sections, like 20, 30 sections in a competition, and you try to be the best, not to crash, of course. sport is very specific and very creative I would say um, you know after racing competition uh, uh, career I actually decided to do more freestyle tricks put more freestyle tricks into it and that gives you the opportunity to go and do this sport and film videos in the cities in the nature so it's very creative for kids you can show them that it's not about competing only. You can just ride at the streets, have fun, be the most creative kid, you know, and you can compete. Okay, who's gonna make this trick and that trick? So it's very similar to BMX also. Uh, so you can combine a BMX, but you, you don't need to have a BMX part. So it's very good for the kids for the beginning, for learning the balance. So uh, I was trying to promote the sport this way and motivate the youngs to, to, to do sports. Well, in the beginning it was just about competing, uh, so we were training really hard and we are still training, but not like uh, that you have to win the competitions. Now we are more about keeping fit and doing what we like to do. But in the beginning there were no um, internet, no YouTubes, no videos, no extreme videos, so we were the pioneers to bring these extreme tricks into normal mountain biking and show the world look what you can do on your bike and um, uh, so it's been 15 years that I was competing seriously I won the world championship in the junior class then in the in the pro and then we actually switched to mountain bikes and started riding trials on the mountain bikes which was completely new discipline people loved it and it, I, made, I managed to be three times second in the world and then I finally won the World Championships um, on the mountain bike as well. So for me, what I really am happy about is I won on many different categories, you know, on different bikes too. And um, I was also um, one of the first guys who started filming extreme videos. Mm -hmm. It came from uh, practicing, because when you practice, you can do whatever you want, right? Uh, you can find any tricks that you would never use in the competition, but you can, you like it. So, what can you do? Just film it, okay? And when the cameras uh, started being better and smaller, we started using them more and more, and we cut and set up nice videos, which, you know, for us it was not so extreme, but for the world of mountain biking, they just begin. It was just something amazing. So that made me pretty famous um, around the world, especially oh, thanks to Red Bull, because when I joined Red Bull, um, they gave me the freedom to do whatever I want, to travel around the world. We did also a lot of live shows. And so that's why actually I'm here 
still doing this after so many years. Basically, it's the performance of it. It's an everyday routine, everyday uh, finding a new way how to be ahead of other riders. In this sport, it's not the same thing. Like it's not like skiing or doing the same thing every day. It's more like creating new moves, new tricks to get higher and higher on higher obstacles. So the sport was just growing, and you have to think. It's not about copying other riders. It's, you have to think how to be ahead of them, you know, what, what can you learn better than others? And that, helped, that kept me going and I really loved it. Also the progress of you go to practice and after one hour you start realizing, okay, today is the day. We can move the limits a little bit. And you go over the limits or you do something very dangerous and you, may, you manage to make it. And then, you know, it comes down again, you relax, and the next day you try again and sometimes it doesn't work. But you're like thinking, what's wrong, you know, what's, what should I do better? And these things, like thinking about your body and your mind and the limits, and, and you know, that, that's something that keeps you going, and especially when you can compare it with other guys. You go to competitions afterwards and then you can compare it. What you learn, what is actually the trick to be the best. Also, in this sport, definitely it's a physical point of view you need to be very athletic you know uh, of course when you are 20 it's easier and now we are just uh, kind of enjoying the, the credit from the past but uh, from my point of view I prefer the competing part uh, when I remember because I was living super healthy super trained and the motivation was just one to be the best in the world you know and that's something that keeps you going to be best on, on the globe is just amazing feeling and uh, later on when you know it's not physically possible anymore um, you know it's more about having fun and showing people that you can do mountain biking even you know, I'm 46 and I motivate people who are 50, 40 years old they think it's over the sports is over, you can't do it anymore. It's not true. It's all about uh, your mind. If you keep practicing, you can do it a long time. I know BMXers, they do backflips when they're 60. You know, like Dennis McCoy from US. And so these guys are amazing. And also Jaromir Jagr, ice hockey player. He's still playing, he's, he's fi he just turned 50. He's still playing ice hockey, you know. Unbelievable, so this is a motivation for me and I try to motivate the others. I, I found lots of techniques because when you are young you can copy the older, then you get better, then you beat them, then there is nobody else you can copy <laughs> because you realize oh I'm one of, one of the top guys in the world so you have to find what you can do and uh, yeah I did a couple of techniques a couple of moves and also found a lot of techniques how to practice my body to be the best and that's what uh, is still going in in these days like I'm still able to travel and um, uh, Red Bull uh, actually gave me the chance to work together in 96 it's been 27 season with this company and the main reason why we got together was, okay, we got the same visions to entertain people, show them that impossible things are possible. And uh, power and concentration is the thing that, that keeps us, you know, like really being the best. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that it's still going like this.
I think one of the best motivation riders was actually from Moto Trials. It was Jordi Jordi Tares. Jordi Tares is a former world champion uh, many times actually, and he's running his company for motorcycles. So he was one of the best. I remember I was practicing hard in the hot weather, sweating, wearing helmet always, and I was thinking. I want to be world champion like him. I don't care if I lose my hair or because of the helmet or you know I didn't give a, I didn't care. So uh, it was one of the guys. And then of course there's more. There was more and more uh, sportsmen. I like the athletic uh, guys, you know, the runners, and so I, it's good to watch sports and to, to to see you know the athletic part of the sport. And also. Later on, when you're kind of losing this motivation in the, to be the best in the world, uh, you have to find different. And that's, for example, for me it was uh, finding new sports, combining my skills with, uh, on a different type of mountain bikes. I went racing two years downhill. I went uh, four cross racing and four guys go together the same course. Then I switched to BMX freestyle. So I spent a lot of time in the BMX parks, doing backflips, tail whips, all kinds of freestyle tricks that I never done before. And that that's, that happened when I was 30, when the BMXs usually don't ride anymore. <laughs> but I fell in love with BMX parks, with the with the moves flying in the air, and started learning completely different discipline. And I was actually competing in BMX as well uh, for six years. So these kind of changes from one discipline to another is one thing that keeps you going for so many years, you know. If you, if you do one discipline all the time, you will get bored. After 10 years, you are done. You have, maybe, maybe not, if you have good friends around, but if you feel like it's not so much fun anymore, just do something a little bit different. Right? If you're a football player, okay, just do a little bit more freestyle football, you know, yeah. or just play with a different ball. You know, like like to have uh, something a little bit different. And for me now, at the moment, is the Moto Charles because Moto Charles opened a new door for me to practice. It, it's got the power, it's got the engine, and suddenly I can do a lot of uphills, a little bit enduro style in the mountains. So and it keeps me doing the same moves like on the bicycle. And suddenly I don't need to get the speed only like downhill and pedal. Suddenly I can get the speed anywhere. So. Open it opened a new door for me, so it's trials, but not on a bicycle. So these things keep you going for a long, long time. So you just want to challenge yourself. Absolutely, I, that's what I like. Uh, also, a lot of I get a lot of respect from the uh, riders around the world because of this. I was switching from BMX, you know, onto motorbike, downhill bike, you know, so many different disciplines. So you have to kind of get the nice uh, sensitive feelings for brakes, handlebar, suspension, you know, everything is a little bit different. So I always liked it. I loved it. And also one thing that I was working on was my speed of riding and style. Like in the competitions before, uh, it wasn't about speed, right? It was about the difficulty of um, the terrain. But I was trying to ride as fast as possible to, uh, to just for the spectators that they can watch it, they can enjoy it better, you know. And uh, you know, already during the competitions, I was thinking about the spectators that they they will like it better if I go fast, jumping one, you know. So, and that naturally turned into doing good shows for them as well. So we we did shows live, and people, you know, suddenly there was big crowd. People loved it, so it kept me going as well. Especially when you see that, okay, you do it for for people, but then you have this, those kids who are so excited. I I came back to some of the Central America or South American countries after seven, eight years, and those kids who saw me before, they said they came to me and said, "Hey, Peter, because of you, we started riding bicycles." Isn't it amazing, you know, to motivate kids like this? So this was one of the parts of my career and I realized even if I don't have fun doing the shows anymore, these feelings and these, these eyes of kids just 
you know, kept me going. Uh, did you have any accident during your experience career? Uh, of course, as Brian said, it's a part of the game. And I had a couple of broken bones, but mainly from doing something different. Like, I broke my collarbone during deer jumps. You know, high speed, a little bit over counting, and it was done, but it's, it's part of the game. It's not, it shouldn't stop you. You have to heal, and during the time you have, you, you are thinking, what did you do wrong? Maybe you should, you know, push a little bit less. And, and this time when you are healing your, your injury, it, help, it, it, it helps for your mind. You find a different, um, you know, views of your, of your own life. It's uh, not recommended for an amateur to do the great stunts that you do. Yeah, it demands uh, many experience, isn't it? Of course, yeah, you have to go step by step, uh, not to go too much over limit. You have to go just a little bit when you feel this is the right day, you feel comfortable, you feel you know, sure. You have to go step by step, really. Uh, most of the riders who just watch the video and go, it doesn't, it doesn't end up very well. So, Trials is about controlling the bike, you know. Uh, so you have to keep, you have to be under, you know, you have to have your bike under control, I would say. So, so go step by step. If you're not sure about this jump, about the distance that you can make it, maybe wait a little bit. You can make it uh, in a few months. Just keep going, keep thinking about it. Uh, and then you make it and you'll be more happy because that's the thing that actually the thinking and measuring and practicing that's the thing that you are actually working on to get this target but if you just think okay put your brain out of your head lose your brakes and go you you're never gonna make it you might make it once twice but the, the crash is coming the crash is waiting for you You know, seven years ago we went here with BMX uh, star Senel Grosic. We did the live shows. This time I was expecting that we're gonna do some shows, but because of COVID we obviously couldn't. And that gave us the chance to 100% concentrate on the making a short edit movie, short edit video about riding with Brian in Mauritius. Thanks, Brian, that he invited me here. Thanks, uh, Fabrice from local Red Bull, that they they got this idea to make this project, man versus machine. Okay, sounds great. And uh, we already did a few shows in Qatar and uh, other countries together with Brian. So this time, finally, we have more uh, more possibility to do just video. Of course, the weather was against. <laughs> It was so much raining here, so much uh, humid air, which made it very complicated. Uh, in some of the areas, pretty slippery too. But I think we are we, we were doing some some good stuff, and we were concentrated on high quality, nice quality shots instead of making a lot of shots and long video. Today is not about the length of the video; it's about the you know how you enjoy it, and uh, as you said the vision from the rider and stuff like that. So let's see, I hope people, people will, will enjoy it around the world. Just keep going, never give up. Uh, you, you must have fun. You must have fun, you have to enjoy it. Uh, it's good if you are more guys together, like if you are two, three riders, it's always better fun. Uh, and yeah, just 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 go step by step, and uh, just uh, live your life. And if you think there's something interesting that you can already do, just don't even think about it. Film it, put it on the net. You know, just promote yourself. Look what I'm doing. Maybe you find a partner here who's gonna do the same sport. So just just go for it. <laughs>